here with the uh, Jambalaya podcast and just want to kind of drop a little short on you to see, I don't know where your head is at because I know my head is, whew, is taking a toll on me to see all the things happening in the culture and in the current news. And uh, especially when it comes to the truckers, everybody's talking about the truckers and freedom of speech and we're against mandates. And while I understand the sentiment and I would even say I agree, um, I kind of want to narrow this down uh, for those of us in the body of Christ who understand that our worldview is bibliocentric. And anyone else listening that doesn't have a biblical worldview may still see some things that they can agree with here. So I would like to start by giving a definition of two words that seem to be apropos for the times. One would be brainwash. The definition reads as this. Brainwash means to make someone adopt radically different beliefs by using systematic and often forcible pressure. Propaganda's definition is information, especially of a biased or misleading nature, used to promote or publicize a particular political cause or point of view. Now, do you see how these two things connect? Um, I would say that you could use propaganda to brainwash someone. And then once the brainwashing has happened, you can continually use propaganda on them. So it ends up being like a never ending spiral. And the situation with the truckers uh, kind of brings this up because there's some very interesting information about a particular gentleman. Um, he calls himself a leader. I guess he was voted in as a leader. And he said some things, two comments in particular, and I have a timestamp for them. And I don't know if he was brainwashed or if he was using propaganda or if it's a mixture of both, but I'll let you decide. March 31st of 2020, Justin Trudeau said this, while many of us are working from home, there are others who aren't able to do that. Like the truck drivers who are working day and night to make sure our shelves are stocked. So when you can, please hashtag thank a trucker for everything they're doing and help them however you can. Oh, that's so sweet, Justin. Thank you. I mean, you're thinking about those that take care of us by making sure that supply is met, products are on the shelves. And a lot of these guys, they drive long nights. They are not with their families. And uh, nobody really thinks about how those those products, those uh, food items end up on the shelf. We're just glad to get them. But when we don't have them, we definitely know when we don't have them. And I think it was really great that Justin, for his part, actually said something in regards to their sacrifice. But hold up, it would only be great if we didn't have this statement. And this was the 29th of December, 2021. He said, and I quote, we are going to end this pandemic by proceeding with the vaccination. There is still a part of the population fiercely against it. They don't believe in science or progress and are very often misogynistic and racist. There goes that word again. They take up some space. This leads us as a leader and as a country to make a choice. And he says in all caps, do we tolerate these people? Ooh, there's a lot to unpack there. I don't know about you, but I don't know how we go from celebrating our so-called heroes, those that sacrifice so much to make sure that we have all the things that we need to survive and be able to enjoy life, and then we decide that they're not progressive. They don't care about anybody. They uh, seem to not be able to uh, know the difference between not agreeing with something and then hating someone, which is why they're always called misogynistic and racist. So that's right, Justin. That's right. If you don't want the shot, if you don't want the death jab, then you have to either hate other people or you have to be racist. And for my part, I, I'm trying to figure out how do I, as a black person, unpack this? Because I don't believe in taking something that um, the government tells me I have to take in my body. I never have. Um, I don't believe that I should be forced to do, to do something because those in leadership tell me that I have to. And I don't think that people that I once hailed as heroes would all of a sudden be called racist because they weren't doing something that I thought they should do. That is, however, going to change if you have a political slant. I don't have a political slant where I stand to gain anything. 
I do, however, have a biblical slant. And from this, I would like to jump to scripture because as people of the book, people of scripture, we have to always make sure that we're looking at things from a biblical perspective. We live in a natural realm. We live according to natural laws. This is true. But there's a spiritual realm that exists that we cannot see, and it is the most real, though it is not tangible. It is the one that will last forever, though we cannot see it, smell it, or touch it. Yet it's the one that we treat as though it should be in the foreground. You know, we're always talking about when we go to heaven, when we see the king, when we stand before him. But how about we start implementing those things that are in heaven on earth before even one iota of that happens? Why are we looking up in the sky for the Lord's return when really the way that we live this life, I would say, shows we're probably ill-prepared for that event? Let me, let me share two passages of scripture that will expound on this. The first one is going to be 2 Corinthians 10.5. We destroy arguments and every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God and take every thought captive to obey Christ. Do you see how this would destroy the possibility of being brainwashed? Do you see how this completely abolishes the possibility of propaganda? Now, I'm not saying that none of us as believers could be tricked or even deceived. What I'm saying is that that deception and that trickery could not be ongoing. It could not be habitual. It would never be long lasting because we would be looking for the truth and where the truth is found, lies cannot stand. It destroys arguments and every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God. What is the knowledge of God? The word of God, the spirit of God. The arguments are those belonging to the world. The arguments are those telling us that you must do this or you don't get that. How about the next passage, which is, Romans 12, 2, and it states, do not be conformed to this world. We can just stop there, even though there's a comma. How about let's just not be conformed to this world? And I hear some of you saying possibly, but Ebby, don't we have to acknowledge that those in government authority are telling us to do these things? And what would you have us do? We have to obey those in authority. I would say if those in authority are abusing their authority, and it's pretty obvious to me that they are, then whose authority should you really be listening to? But be transformed by the renewal of your mind. How is there transformation and a renewal of mind if you're conforming to the world? There can't be. The word of God has to penetrate every aspect of our being so that everything we do comes out from that. Everything that we do is based on that. That is our foundation. That by testing, you may discern what is the will of God. So you can't test until your mind's been renewed and transformed. Testing, you may discern what is the will of God. So those of you who are not able to discern what the will of God is, I would say go back to not being conformed to this world. What else? You're not only discerning what the will of God is, but what is good and acceptable, and perfect. The statement I read to you from the leader of Canada, I would argue is not good. It is not acceptable, and it is not perfect. Wherever you stand on the trucker protest, whatever your position is politically, not really concerned with that, but I would argue this. If your politics don't line up with the word of God, and instead they seem to be conformed to this world, and its way of doing things, then my friends, I'd have to say that you're not living according to the Spirit. And that's not me judging you. That's the Word of God. Simple and plain. All right, I hope you enjoyed that short. And until next time, take care of yourselves.